Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. In today's equipment autopsy, we have a, uh, what is this? It's a standalone cooling system from Surgical Laser Technologies. It's part number 0101-6090 revision three, serial number 75. They sold a lot of these. And this is from June of 96. And anytime I get to play with something, that has a sticker that says, explosion risk if used with flammable anesthetics. You know it's a good day. So I'm not entirely sure what this actually, like how it works or anything, but I think just at first glance, it's some kind of pump, and which is good. I get to do a lot of pumps and it does this. So I think a thing, I think a thing goes in here and then you latch it, and I see a little wheel with rollers on it. It's right down in there. It's really hard to see, but there's a little wheel with rollers on it. So before we really tear into it, it probably still works. So I'm gonna grab my plug here, and we'll fire it up. Let's see what happens. Anything? Nothing lights up. Nothing moves. Okay. So it doesn't work, which is probably why we got it in the first place. So knowing that it doesn't work, let's, uh, let's open the fuse port on it and see if it can be fixed in any of the instant really easy ways. Hey look, comes with a spare fuse. The fuses look good. But I've been lied to before. Let's find out. Grab my multimeter. That fuse is good. That fuse is good. It's going awful hard for a couple fuses. Hmm. Oh, it has to go in a certain orientation. Yeah, okay. Auxiliary fluid switch, CO2. This is a CO2 inlet. Hmm. All right. We'll try it one more time because maybe there was a loose connection or something. Okay, that is not a safety switch. So, now we tear into it. But just because we don't have it working yet, doesn't mean it won't be working by the time we're done. So I'm gonna start with taking the back off. Okay, and the back and the bottom are all one. 
continuous piece. Now, as you look at the bottom, you'll see that there's things that look like this. This is where this piece of metal is welded to the bottom, and there's a, the bottom, the end of a bolt. So you can, you can tell that something inside is bolted through. And you can see there's a lot of random stuff. You'll see patterns like these and these are mirrored. So this is probably one continuous thing right here, or it's a match set of something, but it's probably one continuous thing. And that thing is probably somehow this thing as well. And then you'll see these, which are just the feet. Frequently the feet screws are actually holding more than just the feet together. You'll see that a lot. I don't think that's the case here. I think these just hold the feet. But you also see around the perimeter, I've got two, two, two. These bolts are a little different and they match. All the bolts in the middle have little lock washers on them. These bolts don't have lock washers. They're evenly spaced and they're around the perimeter. So I don't want to just take off all these bolts because a bunch of stuff will just fall down loose inside. I want to take off just these bolts to start and that'll probably remove the bottom off the case. If that doesn't, then my next step is to take off the feet. But I, I, think, I think the feet are a separate thing. So my hypothesis is that I will take off just these six perimeter bolts and it'll come right apart. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna pop the knobs. Oh wait, I got I got little grub screws. don't have slip that one in there and that just comes right off this one's on a little bit more enthusiastically oh wait is it that's because there's two And that one just comes right off. So take the knobs off before you get really into it. Set that out of the way. And now we'll take these off as well. If you have a pair of pliers and they look like that, and you don't know why. The reason they look like that is so that you can open them up, slip it over, and now see how this bites down when, I, when the handles are in this position, this bites down all the way? If it's in the bigger position, now you've got a, a gap there. I mention that because I have a friend who had a pair of pliers in her kitchen drawer for years and was absolutely amazed when I did that. I was like, whoa, I didn't know they did that. I was like, Wow, really? So, turns out that's not a thing people know. All right, this, the switch is still in the front, but I think that's a snap mount. Everything else should be able to just, yeah. All right, so now we got some fun stuff. We've got a power supply up here, some control stuff, eh, things. So here's what it looks like. We got a lot going on. And I'm kind of curious to figure. I think the reason it's not working is a pressure switch. Like it needs it needs pressure to do stuff. So let's look at this for a minute. I think before it's all done, I can make it do something. I see a little pump, I see a filter. There's some fun stuff to this. I'm gonna get this out, disconnected and out of the way so that we can get into the rest of it. I was not expecting to find a circuit card up there. Oh, watch this. See this connection right here? Where you've got the tube and a little ring piece separate from the main fitting? If you pull down on the ring piece while pulling up on the tube, they'll come right apart. Really easy, fun to work on, very common type of part. You'll see these a lot. 
We're going to pull that tubing right out of there because we're going to want to come back to that. There's fun stuff to do here with tubes. And this is actually a little valve. This is an interesting valve, too, because there's a valve here, but I've got this movable fitting here and goes off that way and this way and this way. There's a lot going on here for this little tiny valve. So that's a fun part to keep. The other one is just a potentiometer and that's boring. So, and there's stuff hidden. There's things behind this. I gotta open this up. All right, let's pop these out. Nylocks. So the nuts that hold these on are called nylocks. Now, a regular nut will look like that. You're used to seeing that. Now, a nylock, they're thicker, and they'll look like that. And what it is is off the end of the nut, like hooked on top as part of it, there's a nylon ring. And it's basically just a soft plastic that smushes down around what you're screwing it onto, it smushes down around the bolt, and it makes it stick there better. Like, so if it gets loose and because of vibration or it wasn't put on properly, it won't just wander around. Well, that's neat. So that's just an orange light. These are actually buttons that light up. There's our control system. So this is the brains of the operation here. those out, leaving just these. Pull that out, leaving just this, which I can just unplug. So there's the top, and all that's left in there is the switch and the potentiometer, neither of which do we really care about. Now we're down into the fun parts. So we've got We've got a power supply, and we don't need that. Now you can tell this is the power supply, largely by just it's got that look of a power supply. Um, there's a company called uh, Lambda that makes a lot of these for everybody. They're really commonplace. And it's just got that power supply look to it. I'm going to take you off. So there's this one spot right here that has a whole bunch of wires going to it. And in this particular case, they all have the same color code. And it's just a bolt welded to the chassis. And you'll also see this symbol right here. This is your chassis ground. And it's just a, a zero voltage reference for everything. And the reason you have stuff like that is, one, it gives you a safety system because it, it helps make sure that if one of the wires touches the chassis inside that the person operating it isn't going to get electrocuted. But another important thing is to remember that voltage, any voltage, 
always has to have a reference. Volts is a unit of potential difference. So when you're dealing with electricity, you could say, well, I've got like a battery. Battery is a really good example. A AA battery is one and a half volts. But it's only one and a half volts in reference to itself. From one end of the battery to the other end of the battery, there's one and a half volts of potential difference. So think of it like a waterfall. That's how far the volts have to fall. Okay? You can have differences really, really high, like when you walk across the carpet in your house and you touch a doorknob and get zapped. Well, as you walk across the carpet, you're building up static electricity, and you can have 50,000 volts built up. Easy. It's really easy to build up 50,000 volts of static electricity. And it doesn't, you don't feel that. You don't, you don't feel anything because your voltage from one hand relative to your other hand is zero. Even though relative to the doorknob, there's 50,000 volts of difference. The voltage from one part of your body to the other is just zero. And if you have a friend who's walking across the carpet with you and they're built up to 50,000 volts of static electricity, you can touch them and you won't feel anything because the voltage between you two is zero. So... If you have this box and the, you've got the power coming in where you've got line and neutral, well, that line's going to be at 110 volts. The neutral's at zero. But the neutral's at zero volts relative to the generator at the power company. You've got to have a way to make this frame safe. So you connect the frame to your neutral or your ground down here. This is a three pin, so you've actually got a ground as well. And the ground is relative to zero. And you get them all, everybody on the same page, and then you've got a zero voltage reference so that all your volts are the same and the chassis is safe and all that jazz. So I'm just going to leave that connected on there because I haven't figured out where that goes. I'm just, at this point, giving this a good haircut so that we can get rid of the things that don't really matter to us. Oh, that's a lot of ugly. There's all kinds of things in here. Judicious use of zip ties. You go nowhere, okay. We've got a lot of plugs out here to things that we don't care about. not going to be you. It's not even close to you. It's American. Maybe I have it over here. You weren't counting on that, were you? No. No, I've got a whole nother set. That's right. I've got skills. Ha! Yes. So we'll get that down in here. This is a Condor brand power supply, I think. It's a nice one too, it's got a lot of adjustable bits. This Condor brand power supply was made in Oxnard, California. Also the home of Haas CNC. And that comes.
comes right off. Cool, now we've got a big hole. Let's take a look at this and see what we can learn about it. No useful data on the bottom. We can see it's a Condor DC power supply. Here's our input here. This is our outputs here. And the model. Oh, hey, found the sticker. All right. So now we know the input is line neutral ground. Here's a good thing to talk about. Now, remember a minute ago when I was talking about voltage is always in a reference to something? Here's a really good example of that. So your reference here is ground. And right there, chassis ground, pin one. Okay, it's important. They made it pin number one. Now, look at the other outputs. These are all relative to that chassis ground. So we've got our line and neutral. Those are the inputs from you know wall current. And the input goes across J1. It's either 100, it's from 100 to 240 volts. That symbol means AC, and it's going to draw 1.7 amps at max power. It'll take a frequency anywhere from 47 to 63 hertz. So this will run on 50 or 60 hertz, which means it's good in Europe. Um, this this will take just about anything. It's it's a happy power supply. Now we know our our power in goes back here. Okay. That's that's our J1 right there. So this is our master input and a fuse. But over here, we were talking about that reference to ground. We can get 12, plus 12 volts at 3 amps on pins 1 and 2, 5 amps peak. So that means plus 12 volts from chassis ground. So 12 volts above ground, we can get on that pin. This will give us plus 5 at 6 amps, pins 3 and 4, minus 12 at 1 amp, pin 8, plus 12 at 1 amp, pin 9, and then common is pins 5, 6, and 7. And that's just a ground, but that's not a chassis ground. That's the, the ground here. So you could use that for these power supplies. But that's another ground reference. In theory, that ground and that ground should be the same voltage. And they're probably tied together somewhere. But that's your reference. So you can learn a lot. There's a lot of information on that sticker. And all these pins here for all this stuff, those are on the output here. So there's all your pins for the output. And that's the kind of connector they use on the old uh, AT computer cases, big giant pins. So that's kind of cool. And then you can see down in here, this and this are voltage adjusts. So there'll probably be a very fine adjust for a couple of the different output voltages, probably like 5 and 12 or something like that. But you twiddle that, and you'll vary the exact output voltage if it's floating a little bit above or below what you actually want it to be. So this is a totally good power supply, unless it's dead. Could be dead. Maybe that's why it doesn't turn out. But yeah, solid little power supply. But we're still not to the cool parts yet. Now this is not bolted down on top or on bottom. It's just on little plastic standoffs. So the way to take this off, the nice way, see that little wing that sticks out there? This little bit right here? Well, that's flexible. And if you push that back in, this will pop up like that. It's a very polite, easy, simple way to do it. And they're reusable, because you can just push that back down on there. And now it's locked again. Or the more permanent way to remove them is you just get a pair of dikes. Cut the whole thing right off. And then the board come right off. There, you have to mess with that. Now this is a driver board. And we've got a couple LEDs on it. We've got some driver circuitry. This board is designed to activate four other systems. It's the fluid board. And this is, this is custom made for surgical laser tech. You can see a little bit of bodge work on the back. All right, now we're down into hardware, which is good, because this is stuff that I like a lot more than the electronic side of things. First thing we're going to do is get our big box here out of the way. Remember I said there was 
when we were looking at the bottom, I said, hey, these are probably all one big thing and this is probably a part of it. Turns out I was right. Let's take it off and get a real look at it because this is the first of the big cool awesomeness. I said, I think that's a pump inside. It's better than that. It's two pumps. Uh, that one's gonna be hard. Need a little bit more appropriate screwdriver for that. Oh, come on, don't fight me now. Oh, that's really chowdered. Do I have something that will make you happy? chowder one screw. Oh, this is going to suck. There's no way this doesn't suck. It's really... All right. So, I'm trying to get that out. I got three out just fine, but the fourth is all chowdered up. So, we're going to go from the top to get it out. Because either way, I'm, get, I'm getting it's coming out. I'll just take it out this way. Ha! That's right. All right. So now we're gonna. We've got. We've got a tube. And a couple sets of wires. So we follow the wires down. We can get rid of some things that we don't really care about. Get these right down here. So these are the two, and they're all sleeved. It's all very nice. It's very well built. So, those two wires and these two wires. So, we'll set this aside for a minute. Let's see what we got. We got a big motor, and we've got this is all just a bracket assembly, just a locking. Something goes in here, and that locks it in place. And we've got a pair of yellow wires that come off here and turn into a pair of blue wires by the time they get to this end. I'll bet there's a splice in there somewhere. Slide that off and see what we can see. So there's going to be something in there. Oh, hey, look. A splice, nice one, heat shrink and everything. Okay, so we've got a pair of yellow wires here, and then we've got a red and black, that are red and black on this end as well. These have a splice as well, but they maintain the same color. So these are probably sensors for rotation or speed or something. These are probably just power. So we'll strip these back. And that's a 12 volt DC motor. Yeah, 12 volt DC motor. So we'll go over here. We'll grab us 12 volts of DC. We'll clip onto this.
I want a hanger thing where this wire hangs down from up there. Be pretty cool. All right, so let's give it some voltage. And if you look in here, you should see this start to turn. Ooh, it's a gear drive. That's a really nice little motor. I like it. Let's take this motor right off and check out the gear drive. Will you fit? No. You could, if you're one of the cool kids. You could, you could fit. I can turn it with my finger. All right, so we get those out. Take these off. And the motor's on some little rubber isolation mounts, which are pretty nice. But I think I'm going to have to take a lot more apart to get that out of there. It's really, there's, there's a lot going on here. So I got to take this plate off to get the thing off, to get the thing off, to get that thing off. Let's start with that. Or that just spins. So we'll just take the hose right off. We'll save that for later because we're going to have fun with that. Whole lever out. And of course, it's a different size Allen wrench. But now I can get to it easy. That's exactly that size. Oh, and it turns on the back. So we grab a pair of pliers here. Comes right out. Ha ha! 11.30 seconds. Interesting bolts on these. Really long shoulder, very small threaded end. Nice bolt. With a nylock, that's sexy. I like it. Should get that whole plate off. No, nope, I gotta take out the clip pins because this plate actually goes behind this plate. But that's easy to do. You can just come in behind them here. Whole plate will come right. Wow, that's magnesium. You can tell it's magnesium because of how it looks and the fact that it doesn't weigh anything. It's really, really light. So that means, yeah, that could be magnesium too. It's pretty light. 
take these pieces out. And the only thing holding it together on top, that whole assembly out. And there's our compressed air fitting. I'll have to take that apart. And the only thing that appears to be holding that together at all is these two end plates. Maybe I'll get lucky and they're, yes, they are. Okay. Thing comes right apart. So that's sitting, that's, that's a support bearing out here. It's called, it's not actually a bearing, it's a bushing. This is a bronze oilite bushing. So it's like a bronze sponge kind of. And this hard piece of metal will ride in this soft piece of metal and it's, it's a really, really good bearing surface for a long time. And you can see this was set up as a peristolic pump, so a piece of tubing like this would ride against that and there'd be an outside thing that crushes it and these push fluid through. It's a, a displacement setup. So now we gotta figure out how to get this off. Okay. It's smaller than that. down in there. You? Ha! Ah, that's close enough. Okay. So now this whole thing should come right off. That's the only one locking it on there. There, we've got that. Nice set of little aluminum sleeves. And the whole pump thing will come right out. Another one of those magnesium blocks. So that's really pretty. That's, that's a beautiful bit of workmanship. And we've completely got the gear pump. I'm gonna put this little grub screw back in it. Okay, so now our motor is totally out, and we can see, here's a dead giveaway. See how, I'll turn it that way so you can really see it. See how the, the outer diameter of the motor doesn't line up concentrically with the output shaft? Like this is a little bit higher. Well, at the, and you can also see there's this dividing line right here. So I'm going to take this off the mounting plate so you can really see it. That's in there. Hi. How you doing? Okay. So, see how that's way off on one side? That tells you that's clue one. Clue two is there's a whole section here. So this is a motor. This section is a gear drive. So it's, a little, it's called a gear head, which is why the motor, which you can see, the armature of the motor is right in the middle, right where you'd expect it to be. And if I turn it on, and we zoom right in, you can see that turning. You can, you can see the armature turning there. And it's turned pretty fast. But down on this end of the motor, it's not in the center, it's off to the side, and this is turning very slow. 
So this is a gear drive, and I think we can explore it. I think we can open it right up and have a look inside. Torquey little thing, too. All right. Let's learn about gear drives. Because we've taken apart motors before. I don't know that we've ever looked at a gear drive. So this will be kind of cool. I'm going to get all my other screws out of the way except for just motor stuff. Because this is pretty nice and I might want to put it back together again. So there's our motor screws and we'll pop this cap off. Oh, look at that. This is easy. This is a nice simple one to see. So you can see here on our end plate, we've got another bronze bushing. And we've got a couple smaller bushings and these just hold these shafts. Now this is going to go a little nuts but I should be able to, will you stay in there nice? All right, so our motor shaft comes up behind this, right in the middle. The motor shaft comes up right here. And the motor shaft has a gear on the end that turns this big gear. So there's a little tiny gear on the motor shaft and this big gear. So this big gear turns more slowly. This gear turns the little gear on this shaft. So this turns uh, after this, and then this gear is on the same as this, so this turns a little gear down here. And when you put it all together, that happens. I'm really happy it was this type of gear drive so that I can actually show you everything going on in there. And you can see all the gears turning. And one of the nice things about having my nice variable DC power supply over here is I can slow this way down. Because normally, it'd look like that. But we can slow this right down. That's about as slow as I can get it before it's going to just die out. But check that out. You can see all the gears moving in the gear drive. And the best part, I can put this right back together again. And just for the added excitement, I'm going to do it while it's spinning. So we know that goes there. And the other two will probably just fall into alignment. I'm a man of grace and poise. Okay. Working gear drive. So that's a part to keep. I like it. I like that a lot. That, that goes in the keep pile. So now, we're into this, and we've got a couple simple things. Over on this side, we've got a filter, and this is a solenoid valve, and this is a pressure switch. So there's nothing terribly interesting over here, but we might get into that in a bit. I want to get into this. This excites me. Because this is a little air compressor, a little tiny baby air compressor with a capacitor on it. We're not going to need that. We're just, we're just going to cut that right off. You 
come off of there, you're going to cause problems. You're going to cause problems. I know how to fix this. Cut it right there. Ha! There you go. Okay, so now I gotta get this out, which is held in with four big A. Hey! Remember I said those screws that came through? Yeah. Those are the screws that bolt down this. So Let's find an appropriate sized. Oh, you're pretty big. I'm going to say it's that one. No. That one? No, it's in between. So I don't have the tool that it wants. Do I have a tool that it'll take? Yeah, it'll take that. Okay. There's one, two, three, four. Cool. And now this. We'll lift right out, set that over there, and look at that little cute bit of awesomeness. It's a little air pump, and we see that there's a hose fitting that goes on here. So that's our output, and see this thing right here? We'll zoom in really close and give you a good look at that. See that little thing right there? That's a filter. Remember that bronze filter? separator thing we looked at in, uh, in the big gray air compressor we did in the last video. That is the same thing, but on a much tinier scale. This doesn't have a dryer in it, doesn't have the crystals, but basically it's a thing to let air through and keep the schmoo out. So like dust and particulates, that'll keep all that out. And it says right here, 12 volts, one and a half amps. So we've got 20 amps on my big power supply next to me. Oh, that's way better wire than the other side. So we can totally fire this up. Let's see if it works. We'll hook up our ground. And our variable DC. I'm fired up. Oh, look at that. Look at that cool little crankshaft set up. And this is a counterweight. That's what that, the purpose of that sitting there. So let's see how much vibration we get out of it. It rattles the table a little bit, but it's really smooth. So there's 15 volts. I love it. I like that we can take it down really slow. Now, this motor is just a simple straight DC motor. It doesn't have any position indicator. It doesn't have a, a, an encoder on it. Like the other motor, we've got these extra two wires off here, and this is probably for a, a speed encoder. Probably not position, because it's a gear motor, but it's probably a speed encoder. But this motor, because of the gear drive, the gear drive takes the speed way down, but brings the torque way up. So this is a very low speed, but powerful motor. This motor is just a straight motor. So this is a high speed, reasonably powerful motor, but it isn't as, as torquey as the other one. What would happen if we put that motor on this shaft 
to power this air pump, what would the, re what would the differences be for the output? Comment below and I want, I want to see what you think would happen. But what would the difference be in the capabilities of the pump? Would we be able to get more pressure? Would we get more flow? And why? So comment below and talk about that. That's so neat. Now you can hear right there. It sounds like it's rattling, but what's happening, it isn't that this is moving, it's that the, the tiny vibration from this spinning around, there, it really doesn't have a lot of vibration at all, but the tiny vibration that is there goes into resonance with the table, which is just a big plate of stainless, so you can hear that come into resonance with the table. Right there. But if I bring up the speed a little more, now we're out of resonance. And then we're into resonance again. Something kind of cool, if you were to, and you could do this, if you were to use Audacity or something and measure the frequency when this goes into resonance the first time, and then compare that to the frequency when it goes into resonance the second time, I'd be willing to bet they're just about one octave apart. And one octave would be twice the frequency. So this works, and that's cool. And what can we do with it? We've got, we've got a little air pump. What other parts do we have in here? We've got, we've got a pressure switch down in this thing. This is just an output port, so this isn't going to do anything interesting. So we don't care about that. But let's see what it would take to get this out. And I think that's just those two screws. Oh, that's really in there. Okay. So we've got that. Cut that right out, because you don't need that. Okay, so we've got a couple little wires. Yeah, now we can get rid of all this. We don't care about that at all. So much mess. I'm going to want that back, but I know where it's at. So we've got a couple wires here from the pressure switch. Just cut that end right off. That's where the splice is, so we'll cut it right there. Don't need that. And cut this off. Take that down to there. Okay. So we got a whole lot of complicated looking stuff here, and it really isn't. It's really simple, and we can figure it out together. What we've got is this is a pressure switch, and we have to find out if it's normally open or normally closed, and what, if, if we can get enough pressure to do that. And here we've got a solenoid valve. When you put electricity across these, this opens or closes, I'm not sure which, we'll find out, um, air through here. And then this big thing here is a filter and separator. So I'm going to say that this will be our input. Okay? So that goes into there. And ooh! This solenoid valve Yeah, we may have to change this around a little bit. We may not get to use a filter separator. We've got a thing here. This side's labeled common. This side's labeled normally closed, which would make the top normally open. 
So normally air goes from here to here and then I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to experiment and figure this out. Let's strip this down and see what happens. I don't know a lot about valves. I don't, I, solenoid valves are something I've never really played with all that much. So we get to learn together and that'll be fun. Okay, now also over here, this is a pressure switch. So when the pressure reaches a certain threshold, something's going to happen in the switch. It'll either close the contacts or open them. I don't know which yet, but it's really easy to find out because what we can do is just grab our continuity checker here. We've, we've got a meter, set continuity, test it. Okay, so if this beeps, they're normally closed. Open, okay. So, we take our pump, we put our pump feeding into the pressure switch. Now, as long as I don't have flow through the valve right now, this will build up pressure, we'll trip the switch, and the thing will beep, right? Sounds like a plan to me. We would also hear the pump bear down a bit. So let's hold these on here. Which I should totally do with this hand. Okay. Hey, it beeps. I think it's neat that it kind of and the timing of the beeps comes on with the strokes of the pump. Okay. So we know the pressure switch works, we know the pump works. Now we have to figure this out. I need... All right, so I've got some test leads right here on my wall, which are handy, because what I can do is just clip these right on here, which is way easier than trying to grow a third hand as useful as that could be. So we'll put that on there. Put this on here. Now, if all goes well, I turn the knob, the thing goes beep. Thing goes beep. Okay, so we're set there. So we can we can create air pressure, we can pump air, and we can sense when, there, when that pressure is here. And we know our valve is not letting that out. So now if I actuate the valve, that air is gonna come out and it'll either vent out here or here, depending on the mechanics of the valve. But I think it's gonna come out here because this side's labeled common. So I think if I put 12 volts DC across this, I'm gonna get air out here and then it'll stop beeping. So we turn on the pump, and it's gonna build up pressure, and it's gonna activate the switch, and the switch is gonna close the circuit, and that's gonna make the meter beep, okay? Then, if I put electricity on here, it's gonna open the valve, and the air is gonna vent out here, and this, so this will go click, air will come out, and that'll stop beeping, because the pressure's, there, there's no pressure, it's just going right on by. But I need power for this. I need 12 volts of power for this. And my usual 12 volt power supply is doing that thing. Now I got a, another DC power supply over here, but it's rather substantial. 
and I don't have a second set of leads. So how can we make this work? Well, I've easily, I've got, I've got 20 amps of 12 volts here. I only need one and a half for that. And this is going to take a tiny little bit. So I can just manually touch this right in here to these power wires when I want to do. So let's grab another couple test leads. And we'll just tap onto our ground here. OK. So we'll run this over here. And this is now our ground on our solenoid valve. All right. Now we'll grab our positive here. So now I'm, I'm the switch. When I touch this together, this will click, the air will vent out, and it'll stop beeping. Right? Right. So we're beeping, and now it should stop beeping. It totally works. And you can see the hose jump. See, if I stop it, the pressure builds up, and you can hear the beep. Now that I have this awesome little contraption, what can we do with it? I have no idea. But comment in and tell me what you think. So there is your autopsy of a whole pile of really cool, useful parts. This is neat. I like it when we, when we take something apart and can actually use it to make other things. And this is why. You should take apart broken stuff because this was dead. We plugged it in. Nothing worked. It was, it was not, not useful. And it certainly wasn't useful in its, in its original life as a medical implement. But we took that apart, and we got all kinds of stuff. Like probably the power supply is dead or something like that. But this little pump is great. That's, that's awesome. We got a gear motor out of it. We got a filter. We got a valve. We got a pressure switch. This right here, this whole thing, is everything you need for a good little 12-volt battery-powered air compressor. And now this switch, as, as you can see from the top, only has a common and a normally open contact on it. But if this switch had a normally closed contact on it, then what that means is when this switch gets up to pressure, it can open a set of, valve, a, a set of contacts. That'd be really useful because then you could hook the switch up in series with this just by going from here to here and then using those as your power feeds. And then you run the pump, and when the pump builds up enough pressure, the pump turns off. And you've got an air filter here. You've got an air filter here built right into it anyway. You're, you've got your own little air compressor. And I'll bet this little tiny air compressor, this itty bitty little thing, could build up enough pressure to fill the tire on a car. Really, I mean, it's tiny, but car tires only need like 30, 40 pounds. It's not a lot. So this would probably do that pretty handily. This is neat. So I want to thank you all for hanging out with me and exploring this fun little machine and getting to learn all this cool stuff and play with neat toys, because that's why we're here. So thank you for watching. And as always, we'll see you next time.